right, so I figured I'd take you guys on a general garden tour and uh, just kind of combine everything together. Yes, I did shoot a pepper garden tour and I shot a tomato garden tour because there's some people that are just not interested in tomatoes, but they like watching peppers. And there's some people who are just interested in peppers and they're not interested in the tomatoes. And then there's people who are just generally interested in everything and they kind of want one cluster video. So I figured I'd kind of give you a combination of things and cover a lot of stuff I didn't cover in the other couple of videos. So we can just walk you around and I'll point out things as I see it. If you want to see more on the varieties of peppers that I'm growing and stuff, just watch the pepper videos and tomato videos for that stuff. I'm not going to go over every variety, but I will point out stuff that I think I didn't cover in those videos. And uh, that way... You know, you can see what's going on. I still have an aphid problem here, but I am getting it under control. I am going to shoot a separate video on how to deal with aphids and the stuff that I use to combat these things. I'm going to show you what I use. So, you can see I'm spraying them. So, it is killing them, but man, these things spread like a disease. Um, this is one plant I didn't cover in my last uh, pepper video. This is the seeds that I got from the... Um, the suppository depository from the USDA and I I solicited them for seed and so they did send me seed and this is it right here and the only one that came up was this one I received I think two varieties I got this one and a Galapagos uh, Galapagoensis or Go Go Goensis it's the other version of the Galapagos wild uh, Galapagos tomato that I'm growing, but it's the other version of it. It's a small, short, hairy version, which is really hard to get seed for, and it's really hard to grow. So I actually got that one, and they never sprouted. So they only gave me five seeds, so yeah, good luck. And they said it was like a 90% <laughs> chance that it's not going to sprout, so yeah, I didn't do too good with that. But this is it. This is the Capsaicin Abzimnium. Uh, right here and in fact it, it does have these little pods on here and I pulled those seeds out of there and and dropped them down in here and they sprouting so the seeds are actually viable coming out of these old little tiny little pods over here so we did sprout a couple in there just for the heck of it maybe I'll dig those up and plant them elsewhere but we already got a plant growing here and uh, we'll just wait till it starts picking up yeah these aphids are bad I'm gonna do a separate video on aphids I'm going to show you how to deal with these suckers. And let me tell you something. It was really bad. And I also had another problem with, uh, uh, what do you call those things? Those fungus gnats? Man, those things are really bad, too. I never knew how bad they were until I started learning about them. And I just thought it was like every, oh, fungus gnats, they go away when you bring them out. No, they don't. They, they multiply. So you have to kill the fungus gnat problems that you're having as well. Um, so... That's uh, just part for the course, right? You have to recognize the difference between the fungus gnats and the aphids because they look similar, but fungus gnats are like more like flies. This is an aphid. Okay, I don't know if you could... Oh, did he go? Did he disappear on me? He knew I'm filming him. I'm getting ready to squish him. So anyway, let's take you around and show you what's going on. I still have other seeds and I'm still, I am still trying to sprout. It's almost middle of June. So I am still trying to sprout a lot of seeds because they're either getting mowed down by the, um, you know, the slugs or they died from last year. They didn't make it or the mice, uh, the mice and chipmunks been digging up the seeds and eating them, or the birds been coming in here and digging up and eating the seeds. It's just unbelievable. It's one thing after another, plus the dampening off. A lot of them, a lot of these varieties you see here, and plus I have like another dozen or so at the top, um, dampened off. They were all growing, and all of a sudden the whole thing just wilted and died. That's Normally that doesn't happen. Usually a few dampen off. But this time, it was like the whole thing dampened off. So I had to dump the soil, dump it off. Oh, man, what a nightmare. What a nightmare. I'm still planting seeds for those varieties to try to get them going. And it's already late in the year. Uh, these are, uh, you know, just some of last year's stuff here. We got some nice stuff going on here. And uh, we got sprouts going. And uh, uh, let me see, like this one here. I'm going to show you something here. Now, I'm not going to do it to this one because it's probably going to give me a hard time coming off. 
I want to show you. You see how these seeds come up here? They call these helmets. When your seed comes up and it gets a helmet, sometimes they're semi helmets and sometimes they're just, um, you know, full helmet. And when you get a helmet, one of the reasons why you're getting a helmet on that seed is you're either planting it too shallow or you're not giving, you're not pre soaking the seed and the seed's got to soften up a little bit so it can get loose. So when the, when the uh, thing comes up through the soil, it will shed that helmet. So you have to be careful of that. Um, so I recommend if they do come up with a helmet, it's a semi helmet like this, you know, try to pull it off without hurting the plant. I usually squeeze it a little just to loosen it up. And then I pull it off like that. Now, if you break a little bit of the leaf on it, no big deal. One of the reasons why you want to do that is because if you are going to get a dampening off problem, and part of that problem is going to be associated with, um, you know, it's going to be associated with this right here. These things get fungusy, and when they get fungusy, that it'll all start on that one seed, and the whole thing will get that fungus will spread right across your pot. So I recommend highly that anytime you see those seeds on the top of your of anything, whether it's peppers or tomatoes, uh, I recommend you remove them right away. And if you can't, like here, I have a whole bunch of these plants coming up, and one of them's got a helmet, I'm probably just going to yank that. Here's one back here with a helmet. It's just kind of sitting on there. It should come right off, you know. Not going to, right, for the camera. Where are we here? I'm trying to do this here. See, I pop it off like that. You want to get them out of there. Because if they get fungusy, it's going to go right down to the roots. It kills the plant. It invades the plant's lymphatic system. And then next thing you know, the plants, uh, they get that uh, blossom. They, they dampen off because it's a fungal disease. And it's not necessarily like here. There's a whole patch here dying in the NPC one. I got to dig that whole thing. The whole thing's starting to get the, uh, they're all dampening off again. So I got to remove all of that and uh, replant that. So this has been happening on and off because of one batch of bad soil just literally wiped out all my plants. It's happening again there, so we got to get rid of that. Uh, if you get them out, so if, something I want to mention too, like here, you see it's an epidemic of uh, dampening off all my plants are starting to die, but some of them in the back are still alive. If you want to save those ones in the back that are still alive, so you have to replant them again, you have to dig up that part of the soil, get rid of the soil, clean off all the soil. Then you got to take those things, you got to spray them down with a hose. And I used a mister. You know how you got your nozzle that changes on your hose? If you got a mister nozzle, spray all the dirt off it, get rid of the old soil, put a new thing of soil in there, plant it in that, and generally the plant will take off. And once it gets big enough, the damping off, it, that's not even a bad fungus. It's just any kind of mycelium, mycelium that's in that soil is going to kill young plants. It will absolutely destroy it. So you, you want to, you, you wanna, um, if that happens to you, you want to immediately get in there. In fact, I'm going to pull this out of here now so I don't forget after the video. You see what it's doing? You see, these are all these are all gone. Get rid of all of them. So I still have a few left here. And so what I do is I break it break it up like this. See how I just pulled them up? Uh, you need to get these out of here, like that. The ones that are still good, you got to get these out. You got to separate them from the ones that are sick. And then from there, uh, what you can do is you. I'm not going to do it right at the moment because I'm still shooting a video. But what I'm going to do from there, you got and all this old stuff that's all dead. Get rid of it. Throw it, burn it if you could. Get get it out because all this stuff is. It's already got the stuff in there that's going to kill all your rest of your plants. So get it out. You know, and uh, and I got to dig that part of the soil out. That's still it's all fungus. Here's some more. Here's my capsicum fluxuosum. See that? Isn't that gorgeous? Little plant. Oh, the flowers are coming out of this thing like crazy, guys. Look at all these flowers. So, hopefully it makes some fruit. I can't wait to try one of those. All right, so over here we got we got some peas we're growing. This is called the mesculin uh, mix. Mesculin mix. Not mescaline, but mesculin. It's just a general mix of certain types of greens, which is pretty cool if you're going to grow them 
for uh, greens. And so if you're kind of somebody who likes to eat sprouts, this is a good option for you. You just pretty much grow them till they get like this. I wouldn't recommend growing them like this. Again, I'm growing for seed. But if you're going to grow any of this stuff, I recommend you, um, you know, grow it in the open, get it really thick, and just mow it down. And just eat all the greens in there. That's a good salad. That's, that's it. That's your salad green right there. You know, so you grow like 10 of those pots with a mix in each one of them. And you can cut those pretty much almost every day, you know, if you're eating salads every day. We got a number of basils here. We got the cinnamon basil. This is a great one. Um, I haven't done any reviews on basil, so I figured I'd visit that. We're going to do some reviews on that. Little Fingers eggplant. I did this last year, and I, I shot a video, and it disappeared. I don't know where it went. So we're going to revisit this and do another taste test on the Little Fingers eggplant. And uh, we'll give that one a taste test. This is called the mammoth basil. And this is really strange. You see the leaves are really ruffled. Very, very ruffled. So that's going to be cool. We're going to do a review on that one. We got the Russian tarragon back here. It's very similar to um, cilantro as far as the look goes. But I don't know about the taste. But we'll find out what it tastes like when we get to it. We got marjoram right here. This is one of the spices I really like to use a lot, along with oregano and basil. This is one of my uh, main spices uh, that I use in my cooking. Then we got sweet basil here. And this is all I know that it's called. I don't think it's the, uh, it's not the same as um, the Italian sweet basil. That one has, is more fragrant. This one's like slightly fragrant. It's more of a, the type that you would dry out and use for a long-term storage. So it's not really that sweet. This one's very aromatic. You rub your hand across here, this whole area starts to smell like, um, it just starts to smell like basil, the whole area. It's very fragrant, this particular variety. Over here, we're growing four season lettuce. Most of this I'm going to let go to seed so I can save the seed, unfortunately. But um, uh, I will have plenty of seed for this, hopefully. If it, if it doesn't really look like it's going to produce seed well in this area, I'll just move it outside somewhere and then get it to bolt outside. Over here, this is called the Red Reuben Basil. Now, this isn't the Dark Opal. The Dark Opal gets very black, almost. It's a very dark purple, very black type of opal base. This is not. This is actually called Red Reuben. And it gets a, it gets kind of a, a purpley color, but it gets like a slight undertone of like a um, mahogany type red color to it. It's very strange. So I figured I'd give that one a go. And uh, I don't have any more black opal basil or I would have grown that one too. So we're going to grow the Red Reuben basil. Over here we got chamomile. Now if you guys never made chamomile tea... This is the stuff you got to use to make it. So once it once it grows upwards and it makes a flower, looks very similar to a daisy, uh, you dry those flowers out and then uh, you just use them to make chamomile tea. That's what you use to make tea with. So we're going to grow those this year. We're going to try to get some seed out of it and we're also going to make chamomile tea. Here's some more cinnamon basil, I believe. This is very aromatic, guys. Oh, it's amazing. This stuff is so... This, this might be licorice basil from last year. This is a volunteer, I think, and it's not from... It's not this stuff. You can smell a difference. This stuff is more like, weird-like. It smells more like candy. This stuff smells more like licorice. So, yeah, this might be like a licorice basil right here. And over here, we're growing the just purple tomatillo. Not the green variety, just a straight purple type. We're going to put this outside eventually. I'm just letting it grow in here for now because the insects are chewing everything to pieces. Uh, I got a really bad, um, what do you call those things, uh, flea beetles. I got really bad flea beetle problem in this greenhouse this year. And I don't know where they're coming in from. Everything, I got that and I also have the... Um, Fungus gnats, which what fungus gnats do, which a lot of you may or may not know, fungus gnats eat, they make larvae like little maggots or worms, and those worms like will live in your soil and they'll eat the roots of your plants. So you need to get rid of them. I'm going to try hydrogen peroxide next. We're going to give everything a dose. Hopefully it doesn't, you know, if I make the mix right, it doesn't, um, you know, damage the plants in any way, but that will uh, eventually kill them. Uh, also, too, this is the... Uh, Solanum Chimaluski tomato, very rare wild uh, tomato variety, or, or Chimaluski's wild tomato. Very rare variety to get, very hard to get. This tomato was wintered over from last year, 
and uh, we never got fruit from it but hopefully this year we can get this thing to fruit and uh, you can see the stem on it is very woody it's almost wood like a tree you can probably make furniture out of it now and the smell of this tomato is so strange I don't know how to describe it to you it's so fragrant it smells like a um, it smells a little bit like a citronella, like citronella candle. It has that kind of a smell, but more of a um, an or smell of an orange or a lemon in there. It's really a strange, very, very strange smelling uh, type of tomato plant. And it's, it's very strong. It's stronger than all the other tomato varieties, the odors from the wild tomatoes. This one's very, very strong odor. So I have a couple of these plants going. Um, little little note about this variety. Um, if you are going to grow it, eventually, hopefully, I get seed and I can offer it. But if you do grow it, you have to like find where it's going to grow. If I take this tomato plant up and I move it to another part of the greenhouse, this plant will die. I don't know; it'll stunt and die. It just it doesn't like to be moved. Once you put it where it's going to be, you have to leave it there. Now it it took months for this to get to this point where it's growing again. It was big and growing and all, and then it all died back because of the winter. And then I brought it out here, and then the transfer shock, and the transplant shock, and the whole nine yards hit it. And then so it went to stunting stage, and now it's starting to pick up. And I'm also starting to feed it really lightly, so that might be helping it along. But this is a very, very difficult tomato variety. It's the hardest tomato variety I ever grew. Very difficult. It, it, one, the slightest little changes in environment with it, with this variety, will cause it to die or stunt. I've had, I don't know how many plants in there. I had probably 10 or 12 in there. I'm down to like, what, three, four plants? And then I got one or two more in another pot over there. Here's the, um, um, this is capsicum lanceolatum. I cut, I just took the cuttings and stuck them in the soil. This particular variety of pepper plant will root very easy just by sticking it in the soil. It'll just root and start growing. So it's one of those strange kind that do that. Here's my candlelight mutant pepper. I wanted to show you that. They are coming up nicely. So it looks like a seed guide in there that doesn't belong. That's possible. I'm not sure. I'm going to leave it alone because maybe that one particular seed hybridized. And so maybe I'll get like um, something really strange out of it. So we'll keep that one around. And there's Chico. Right, Chico? Say hello, Chico. Chico. Come on, say hello. He's useless. I call him useless because he doesn't do anything. He just eats and, you know, he walks around. He doesn't chase anything anymore. He doesn't catch me mice anymore. He's, like, useless, basically. Um, yeah, a lot of people are asking me about this thing. I, I can't wait to rip this plant down. I mean, look at this thing. I cut this thing all the way flat to the top. And it, look how big. The, every year it's the same problem now. You know, I should never plant it here, but I didn't know it was going to grow like this. And it never flowers, and I never get anything out of it. So I'm just going to cut it down and get rid of it. I'd rather have all this open so I can do something with it. I can turn this into an extension. I can maybe put, um, you know, some raised beds here with stones. Make a couple of stone raised beds and then plant stuff in here. But I can't. This is like, I don't know. I, I liked it. I liked the idea at one time, but it's never going to produce fruit, and uh, it's got to go. So, unfortunately, it's pretty as it looks. I don't want it here because I need the growing room for my gardening. It's more important to me. Look at this. It just takes me over. Um, here's more tomato, wild tomato plants that pop up volunteers. I also got volunteers coming in all around. Blueberry bushes. You can see my, blue, my, my blueberry bush here is doing pretty good. It's doing better than it's done in the last few years. This is, a, I think, a medium bush blueberry, or it could be a high bush blueberry. But the birds have been picking all my blueberries off. I'll show you the other plant in a minute. This is like a medium-sized blueberry. You generally get blueberries about that size. It's not like a wild variety. The short bush, the low short bush type uh, blueberries are much smaller. They're more of a pain in the neck. This is like a medium bush. They get a little bigger. And then the high bush blueberries get really big. They can get quite large. You see the nice clusters here, but I'm hoping that the birds don't pick them clean. That's what I'm worried about. And here's my other blueberry bush. 
That's it right there. And you see there's no blueberries on it. Why? Because the birds picked it clean. There's only like, they left me like three or four blueberries. Isn't that nice of the birds? I mean, this thing was completely covered in blueberries, guys. Absolutely covered. There were blueberries everywhere. And they're all gone. That whole bush has been literally picked clean. I mean, you might see a few here and one or two there. This thing was completely covered and filled with blueberries. This one here, believe it or not, I found that on the other side. I remember planting that like, oh my God, maybe 10 years ago I planted it. And then the, all the raspberry bushes grew in around it. And I forgot it. I just forgot I had it. And now as I was clearing out the other side, which I'm going to show you in a minute, as I was clearing that out, this was there. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You know, and there was a little tag next to it still, even though it was, you know, there was nothing on it. That was my pink lemonade blueberry. And so I figured I'd dig it up and pot it and see if it lives. And if it starts getting leaves and starts living, then maybe I'll plant it out here somewhere and uh, see if we can get some pink lemonade blueberries off it. But yeah, that was a cool little find. A nice little treasure. And um, the inside of the garden is still under construction, obviously, because we're not ready. We are not ready. We got to get the rest of this all planted out with tomatoes, and that is just—it's a lot. Of, a lot of times got to go into that. I got to get leaves in there. And now I got to fight the birds. I got to fight the bugs. The sun. Oh my God! It's like I'm going to be giving up on this soon. Here's my pond. Some of you guys might still be interested in the pond. A little dark in the water, but that's fine. It's filled with goldfish and frogs. So this is a weeping golden something. Some golden. I planted this here a while ago. Isn't that a pretty plant? Should be in the front of my house, but I figured I'd plant it back here and make it make it look a little presentable. I gotta pull a lot of weeds out of here now because now they're really starting to get large. And so I don't want that. I want you to be able to see the rock around here and it's really it's really growing out of control. It really needs to be maintained. And so I gotta get in here and do a cleaning. Here's my uh, echinacea comes up every year it's a perennial and it flowered and it made seed and um you could see the, all of the the little echinacea plants down here i gotta pull all these up and maybe i'll plant them around the yard i gotta get them out of here here's these uh suckers from the uh sumac tree people been telling me they having nightmares with this stuff i warned you <laughs> i told you about it i told you you see these sumac trees you gotta rip them down which is probably what I'm going to do with most of these. I'm going to start taking these all these sumac trees down. I left them here because it, it creates shade for the pond. And that shade for the pond is really good. It keeps the algae down. And that's the reason why I left it. But man, the, the price you pay for leaving these trees here are just absolutely not worth it. Because it's putting all these roots out. And now i gotta, I got to deal with it. Here's the fu fu fuchsia or futusia. The ornamental grass. And you can see it's created some, uh, you know, it started springing off in different areas. So there's a couple of them growing. So maybe if I get a bunch of these growing, I might move a couple of these up to the front of my house. Because these look really, really cool. i got to get this stuff out of here. These look really cool when you plant them uh, the right way in your garden beds in the front of your house. They look really, really cool. They're really nice. It's a very, very nice uh, type of plant. And normally... Uh, you wouldn't want to let them go to seed like this because you can see they're starting to seed Which I'm going to start saving the seed to this and see if I can start it again on my own But they're all around there's a bunches of them all around this whole area It's just popping up in random places. So yeah, we'll, we're gonna get a bunch of these growing and they're, they're perennial So they come up every year like that, you know, so they're Really cool. Here's some dogwoods. I recovered from the garbage people um, not people but I think like Lowe's or Home Depot was throwing them in the garbage in the, with the pails in it because they were dying. So I took them and threw them in the back of my truck. And I planted them and here we are, four or five, six years later. And they are growing like you wouldn't believe. These are red twig dogwoods, which they need to be pruned as well. And I like this shadowing effect that it gives you because it gives you a little privacy back here. From, you know, your neighbors and stuff walking around. Rip this out. I forgot what this thing was called. This was that one tree. I don't know if I'm going to plant this somewhere else. I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, um, 
it's I don't need it no more. Maybe I'll plant it in there somewhere. It's starting to rain. And I just want to show you this. And this is the new garden bed. I extended it to the other side here. All right, so now we have that garden over there. Now we extended it four feet past. And now I got all this room to plant tomatoes now, which has to be done because I just don't have the room anymore. And growing tomatoes in a greenhouse, for many reasons I can't right now for several years because of the tomato leaf mold problem I had. So because of that reason, I can't grow tomatoes in the greenhouse. So they all have to grow out here for now. And then uh, and we could go into the greenhouse eventually. But either or, that's my new garden bed all the way down. I'm going to eventually have to build that soil. It's just straight dirt. Nothing's mixed into it. But tomatoes are actually growing out fine. I'm going to keep all my tomatoes in pots like that right there. You see all those pots? That's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave everything in pots because of the animals, the bugs, the insects, and the diseases will wipe them out if I plant them directly in the ground. So just pot them and leave them that way, and uh, hopefully, um, you know, they will, they'll survive the uh, elements that are out here. And we're growing the Romano pole beans out here, but they're literally, look at what, I mean, these beans were beautiful when I planted them. And I moved them out here. Of course, you go through that one week of transfer shock. Well, a week is too long for these plants to sit out here with the types of insects that are out here. Look what they did to my, my bean vines. It's so bad here, guys. It's ridiculous. I don't know if these beans are going to grow now or what. I really don't. You know, plus the temperatures have been in the 90s and 100s with absolutely no rain at all. It's not even been cloudy, and normally I don't complain about that, but man, for new plants, oh, dude, it's rough. Unless you're going to get out there and water it three times a day, the plant's never going to make it. And I say three times a day, I literally, by, by, if I water it at 8 o'clock in the morning, these pots will be bone dry by about noon. So I got to come back out and water again at noon. And then I got to come back out again in the evening and water it again. Yeah, I should have mulched in there, but that the slugs hide in there. It's bad enough with slugs, which most of this is slug damage, believe it or not. And uh, it's just nothing I can do with it. So life is what it is. My grapevines, these are all my grapevines. This year, we're, I think we're going to get grapes, though we got a late frost. I think we're still going to get grapes. Not all the vines are producing uh, our grapes, though, unfortunately. Some of them did freeze off. See, what happens is, is if you get a late freeze in a year, the buds that come out, the first buds that come off of here, they freeze. If they freeze and fall off, the second buds that come out, they don't, you, they're don't. they not going to produce fruit. So, there's a sickly-looking leaf. Um, but we do got some here that might produce grapes. You know, we do have a couple of uh, grape clusters here. I'm just not going to get that many. You know, most of the buds froze off. Here's some more grapes. A couple more things of grapes here. Some more grapes there. Grapes over here. So, yeah, you, some of these plants will actually put out grapes. There's, I see them around on this one. That last plant I showed you has no grapes on it at all because they froze completely off. Here's some... I don't know what that is. Grape flowers. A couple here. Here's some more grapes. There we go. This one's going to give me some grapes this year. If the insects don't destroy them on me like they usually do. So I have to spray everything like 50 times with poisonous chemicals to, to constantly kill the insects. Let's see here. Has this one got grapes? This one might not. Uh, yeah, a couple here with grapes on it. Didn't get all the buds. Didn't get them all. A lot of these plant branches are, are bone dried. Uh, here's some grapes here. I'll get a few clusters off here if the insects don't completely destroy it like they usually do. And again, some grape clusters on here. Let me see something. This is the last one. I don't see any clusters on here. This one must have froze all the buds. That's why. Yeah, there's a couple small things on there. Not many grape clusters on this one. Uh, with these grapes, when I bought them, they were all special varieties that I bought from eBay, of course. And none of them were what they sold me. Every single variety was not what they These are all regular standard Concord grapes. 
And they told me it was the pink this one and the wine grape that one and the Cabernet grape and that and the Marlowe grape and all this stuff. And it was nothing but, you know, the normal grapes you get. The, uh, the, the Burgundy grapes or whatever. That's, they're just, <laughs> that's why I don't recommend ever buying anything from eBay. I would never recommend that, guys. And my cherry tree, unfortunately, uh, well, the cherry tree was absolutely loaded with flowers, and I think there were a couple of them that did have fruits on it, and not anymore. Uh, it froze, and it froze all the flowers and fruits that were on this tree. So now, I'm not going to get any cherries on my, on my tree this year. And I pruned it back specifically to give me that, but I guess I'm not going to get anything again this year because it is frosts that are coming in the, the trees are flowering in in April sometime and then the end of May we're getting hit with this unbelievable frost so I'm losing I'm losing all my fruits my fruits from my fruit trees every year same thing with the with the apple trees it does the same thing I'm losing all my fruits uh, here's this thing I don't even know what this is I asked you guys a hundred times what this is you tell me what you think it is and I don't remember I never remember but here it is. I'm not sure what this is. I don't think it's going to fruit. This might be, uh, this is a uh, hazelnut, I think. So far, I still didn't get anything off of that one. It's still got to grow. Uh, here's the Quincy, I think. It's the Quincy. I think this actually flowered again. Uh, the frost destroyed everything on me. So now we got nothing. I got to cut this down. This is a weed. That's got to come out. Um, I don't know what this is, guys. What is this thing? Does anybody know what this is? Is this a weed? This might be a weed, guys. I don't know what this thing is. This might be paw. I don't know. I, as I asked you guys the last time, I asked you if it was pawpaw or something. I cut down there are a few apple trees here. I cut them down because they're just... What they do is they sell... They, uh, they go to the store on eBay. They get the apples. And they get all the seeds out of the apples. And they sprout them. And they sell you all the sprouts. And they rip you off. So they're telling you it's this apple, it's Granny Smith, and it's wine sap apples, and it's nothing more than the seeds that they're getting from like Walmart and they sprout. That's it. That's all that it is. So I don't think my pear tree made any pears again this year because of the frost. So I don't think there might be a couple pears on here still, believe it or not. I don't see them. Maybe down here. There might be a couple pears down here somewhere. I never seen a couple, couple on there that may have survived the frost. But you can see the frost comes in. Here's the old, the leaves from that where it frosted off. It it burns off your buds that come out. That's the end of your your fruit. See, see what it does? When it does that to your, you know, on your fruiting on your fruiting stems, that's it. You're not getting fruit this year. You got screwed. Yeah, that late that late frost is bad news, guys. This is another thing. This was for the first time. This thing flowered too. It made this huge flower. Been asking you guys about it. You can see here's what's left of it. it made this huge, weird-looking, large-looking flower. I don't know what this. This might be a black walnut. Is that what this is? No, it can't be. I don't know. It has a very fragrant smell. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I knocked the camera shut. The bugs are driving me crazy. I got to end this video, guys. I can't take it out here. It's unbelievable. I'm getting swarmed by gnats. So, yep, here's my uh, gooseberry. I'll uh, I'll show you what they look like. Maybe I'll try sprouting the seeds from those gooseberries. I'll see if they, uh, you know, see if they sprout or whatnot. But anyway, guys, I got to end the video. That's it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.